Hello students, welcome to lecture 25 of the online course on nanophotonics, plasmonics and metamaterials. Today's lecture will be on metamaterial perfect absorbers. So, here is the lecture outline. We will first look into what are these uh, metamaterial perfect absorbers and then look into the classifications like narrow band perfect absorbers and broadband perfect absorbers. We will also take an example of uh, ultra broadband perfect absorber and then we will see the applications of this uh, metamaterial perfect absorbers or MPA in short and their application in solar energy harvesting and as uh, thermal emitters. So, when we talk about metamaterials, the first thing that comes to our mind is that these are basically artificially engineered structures. So, where the unit cell is designed in such a way that can give rise to some extraordinary properties which are not found in natural materials. And the first thing that comes to our mind will be the negative index material, right? negative refractive index. But that is not all. When you think about other applications of metamaterials, one most important application is towards light absorbing. Now, light absorbing by any uh, artificial structure has always been a matter of research because you want to maximize the absorption. Like why, why you need that? Like if you think of a um, solar cell where you are harvesting uh, solar energy, so you want to absorb the entire solar radiation that is falling on the solar cell. You do not want anything to be reflected. What goes back is actually a waste. So, you are, you are not efficient if you are not able to capture all of the solar radiation coming towards you. Similarly, a photo detector or any other such devices where which are supposed to uh, you know harvest light, you want them to first act as a perfect absorber so that you can absorb that okay? and then you can convert that you know uh, absorbed energy into some other form. So, light absorption is another eye catching characteristics of these artificial structures which are metamaterials and the metamaterials with near perfect light absorption are known as this metamaterial perfect absorbers MPA. Okay? Now, in order to realize perfect absorption, reflectance is suppressed and how do you do that? You do that by matching the effective impedance of the material of the metamaterial to that of the incident medium. So, whenever there is no impedance mismatch, there is no reflection. And when light falls on an interface, there are three phenomena that takes place. One is reflection, one is absorption, the other one is transmission. Okay? So, you have to somehow in absorbers, you want the entire light to be uh, absorbed. So, you are trying to cancel the reflection by using some uh, metamaterial uh, absorber and also you are trying to get rid of the transmittance and that you can do by introducing another metallic plate which acts as a mirror or by using similar mechanism that we have seen in the multilayer system. So, metamaterial perfect absorbers they do not have any transmission, they also do not have any reflection. So, whatever falls on them should get absorbed. Now, what do you mean by perfect absorption? So, we typically call a perfect absorber when it is close to 99 percent absorption okay? and it remains highly absorbed, absorptive um, over a wide range of incident angle okay? uh, for both T e and T m polarizations. Okay? So, if you if you recall our discussion previous discussions at larger angle at glazing angle you usually have larger reflection, but in that case you know your light will not be that strongly absorbed. So, at larger angle there is a possibility of uh, absorption to get reduced than 99 percent, but still it should be like at least more than 95 percent or so. Okay? 
So, what do you basically take to make this kind of absorbers? Now, when I tell you that this material is lossy, the first thing that comes to your mind is that okay, this is a lossy material, so it is not very good for waveguiding because there is high loss. Also, it is not a very good uh, material for creating a resonator cavity because it will have uh, low Q because it is a lossy material. So, the full width half maximum will be large. But then, lossy materials are useful, very, very useful in case of metamaterial absorbers because these materials can then significantly enhance the efficiency of absorption. Okay? So, recently metamaterial perfect absorbers have grabbed a lot of uh, attention because of their near unity absorption capability over narrow band or broadband. Okay? So, that takes us to the classification of this uh, metamaterial perfect absorbers. So, as you can see the based on the wavelength range they cater to, you can categorize them into two buckets, narrow band uh, metamaterial perfect absorbers and then you also have broadband metamaterial perfect absorbers. So, if you carefully look at the narrow band structure, here you see uh, figure A, you can see that these are basically overlapping rings and a column and there is a gap between this column and the center of the ring that is called delta x. So, when delta x equals 0, you get almost like 90 percent of absorption right in this particular case. When you change delta x to 200 nanometer or so, you get almost 95, 99 percent of reflection okay? sorry absorption when you further increase it to 270 or 350 what is happening the resonance is even getting sharper so you are getting a high q absorption peak and you are closing towards that perfect absorption mark which is very very close to unity absorption right so this is typically what I am not going to describe immediately the physics behind this. Okay, these are kind of symmetry breaking, high um, high Q modes. Okay, and I'll just look into the features here because this is the narrow band. We'll see in this lecture only how to develop a structure that can give you a narrow band metamaterial perfect absorber, and we'll also look into these particular structures which are able to give you broadband metamaterial perfect absorber. So, here you can see that you know it is basically a broadband absorber. So, you can see it ranges from uh, 3 to say 5.5 micron where uh, the absorption is maintained over say 95 or 99 percent like that. Now, what are these three arrows showing here is that a different different regime, different portion of the structure is playing the role of absorbing the light that is falling onto the structure. So, here is the structure this is basically a you know this is the tapered shape okay? you can also call it tapered uh, tooth kind of a structure. So, a different different wavelength a different different part of the structure is resonating and that is able to absorb the electromagnetic radiation. Here you see at short wavelength, the top portion of the structure is absorbing most of the incident electric field, magnetic field okay? and uh, at longer wavelength, the bottom most part of the structure which is the widest portion of the structure is responsible for the absorption. Now, let us look into some of these uh, techniques of how do you design uh, narrow band metamaterial uh, based perfect absorbers. Okay? So, here is the schematic. So, you need metal, lossy metal to uh, design absorbers. So, here is a uh, schematic of a 2D array of gold uh, discs. Okay? So, the diameter is 352 nanometer and the thickness is 20 nanometer and the periodicity along both x and y directions are 600 nanometer. Then, there is a spacer layer below this uh, gold discs that is 
MgF2 that is uh, magnesium fluoride and it has got a thickness of 30 nanometer and then you have a gold mirror which is 200 nanometer thick. So, this is basically that portion which is completely cancelling out any chance of transmission through this structure. So, 200 nanometer gold film behaves like a bulk gold film it, should, it is giving you zero transmittance and it will be able to act like a good mirror. Okay? And this entire structure is placed on top of a glass substrate. Now, you can make narrow band uh, MPAs, okay, matter material perfect absorbers, uh, for which the top metallic layer is either patterned or unpatterned. So, here we are taking a patterned metallic layer. Okay? Now, in this case, what we are using, you are using a normally incident light with x polarization. However, x and y polarization hardly make any difference here because the structure is symmetric along x and y. right? And you have taken the permittivity of uh, magnesium fluoride is 1.9 and these are the parameters that describe the bulk gold permittivity near the uh, near infrared wavelength range. You can use Drude model with the plasma frequency of 1.37 into 10 to the power 16 hertz okay, and damping constant is this one. Okay. So, with that you can figure out that when, so these are basically simulated reflection spectrum which is plotted when the damping constant is considered to be uh, 1 times, 3 times and 5 times of the bulk gold. So, here you see when you are basically you know there is significant difference in the reflection spectrum uh, or reflection dip okay? and you can see that uh, in the when it is 3 times when the damping constant is basically 3 times of that of the bulk gold you are able to get negligible reflection. Okay? So, it is 0 0.28 percent okay? and this is an scale up to 1. So, you can understand. So, this is basically 0 0.0028. So, it is almost 0 reflection. right? And as I told you in this perfect absorber A is basically calculated from what is reflected and then what is transmitted these two are taken out from 1. So, because of this bulk gold there is 0 transmission. So, if it, there is no reflection the entire thing is getting absorbed. Okay? So, here it shows the reflection with 0 intensity is achieved using a damping constant that is equal to 3 times of that of the bulk gold. So, that actually tells us that what should be the ideal thickness of those discs. Okay? So, if you are able to use very thin discs, so you can actually get this high damping constant that can give you this perfect absorption. So, that is where the design of this matter material comes into picture. At resonance, a strong enhancement of the localized electromagnetic field takes place between the two layers, the two metallic layers. So, there is a gold disc and then there is a gold film and in between there is a thin uh, spacer layer which is the dielectric. So, this electromagnetic energy can be efficiently confined in this intermediate spacer layer and that ensures that no light is reflected back. So, you are basically trapping the energy. So, this gives rise to profound reflectance dip in the spectrum with nearly zero intensity and that in turn give rise to nearly 100 percent absorption. So, in fact, this kind of devices uh, work as perfect absorber over a wide range of incident angles. Now, to better understand the nature what is happening in this per particular uh, perfect absorber. We should look into the current distribution at resonance which was simulated and this is the figure that shows that. Okay? So, here you can see that there are basically anti parallel current distribution uh, in the gold disc and the bottom gold layer. So, here it goes like this and here it is like this. So, you can think of a you know circulating current like this and this is basically can be thought of as a magnetic resonance which comes from the you know circulating current and this current basically results in a magnetic moment which strongly interacts with the magnetic field of the incident light. Now, at resonance what will happen? A strong enhancement of the localized electromagnetic field 
is established between these two layers okay and that is the reason why you know you will be having a trap of energy in this magnesium uh, fluoride spacer layer and no light is going back now the simulation study has also been con uh, conducted to see the angular dispersion of the absorption peak because right now the peak is very very attractive it is giving you almost 100 percent absorption but you have done only for a normal incidence that is theta equals zero now when you do the different angle for both the polarization these are the plots that shows you with uh, frequency and angle how the absorption peak is uh, changing so this is for T polarization and this one is for TM polarization. So, if you look at the TM polarization first, the one on the right, the absorption peak is seen to be nearly independent of the incident angle. So, here on the y axis, you are varying the incident angle. So, it varies from 0 to 80 degrees. And here you see that more or less it is independent of the incident angle, then that is amazing. And uh, at even at 80 degree, you are able to at the same wavelength you are able to hit almost 80 percent of absorption sorry uh, 96 percent of absorption and that is that is tremendous okay that is really working well and this is because of the fact that the direction of the magnetic field of the incident light remains unchanged with various incident angles and it can effectively drive the circulating currents at all angles of incidence and that is why for TM polarization you hardly see any difference. However, when you look into this particular figure on the left the contour plot here, the magnetic field cannot drive the circulating currents efficiently at very large angles. So, any anywhere above 50 degree or so you see the absorption has dropped significantly. Okay? So, at 80 degree you actually land up having like 50 percent of absorption. So, that is a lot of you know drop from the perfect absorber to that. So, this is one study that tells you how to design a uh, metamaterial perfect absorber and always remember that when you change the size of the disk and the periodicity that would help you tune the position of this uh, absorption peak. Okay. Right now, it is uh, shown at a particular uh, wavelength and it is or it is in frequency scale. So, it is close to say 188 terahertz or so and um, if you change the periodicity or the um, size of the disk, you should be able to tune that. Okay. So, that is how you can design application specific uh, narrowband perfect absorbers. Now, moving on to the broadband perfect absorbers, let us see how you do that. Now, the name itself tells you that you are designing something broadband. So, you should have a kind of a possibility where um, you can cater to multiple peaks that can overlap spectrally and that can give rise to this broadband nature, right. So, broadband definitely you are catering to a much wider wavelength range right now. So, here is the schematic of uh, that broadband um, absorber, but surprisingly it is more or less similar kind of a structure, but then here the material property is different. You are basically using a um, titanium disc okay, on top of uh, a gold film with a silica layer on the top acting as a spacer layer. Right. So, this particular schematic shows a broadband polarization insensitive and omnidirectional uh, absorber working in near infrared range. So, that is the range here it has been targeted to and it is based on a simple traditional metal dielectric metal or metal insulator metal configuration. So, here what happens the highly efficient absorption is mainly coming from the excitation of low Q localized surface plus bond resonance which are supported by the titanium nano disks and you are also generating the propagating surface plus bond resonance 
in the interface between uh, gold and uh, gold film and silica. So, let us look into the spectral characteristics here. So, this is the black line shows experimental result and the dotted line over there shows the simulation result and then they are matching very very uh, closely and uh, you can say this is like a perfect match between the simulation and experiment. So, here you can see that under normal incidence, so uh, here we are only considering theta equals 0. Okay? The measured absorption of this fabricated sample is over 90 percent in the spectrum ranging from 900 to 1825. So, this is the range till which it is more than 90 percent. Okay? So, this is the experimental one and when you do console multiphysics uh, numerical simulation for the same structure, you also see very, very similar uh, result. And in the simulation, you are basically considering a, a single unit cell which has got periodic boundary conditions on both sides to repeat it in both x and y direction and that can give you this particular uh, structure. Okay? So, numerical simulation also shows that it is very, very close and because the structure is uh, symmetric along x and y, so it will be independent of the polarization of the incident light and you can get you know very high uh, absorption when the incident angle is less than 40 degree. So, beyond that you know uh, the there will be drop in the uh, absorption. So, here are some simulation results that shows you how it works. Okay? So, to reveal the physics, uh, physical mechanism in the perfect absorber, you can actually plot the electric and the magnetic fields okay, at the two absorption peaks. So, if you carefully see that there is basically one peak and then there is another peak here. Okay? So, there are basically two peaks which are spectrally overlapping, one is, is a narrow peak and another one is a pretty broad peak. So, there is a peak at 914 and another one at 1468 nanometer. Okay? And uh, if you look into the um, electric field distribution, these two resonances both look like you know electric dipole resonances okay, on the nano disks when you are considering you know uh, the TM polarization. However, the magnetic field distribution that you see here is pretty different in these two cases. And if you also analyze that what is the origin of uh, this peak, then you can say that the short wavelength resonance that you are seeing at 914 nanometer is basically considered to be the propagating um, surface plus bond PSP okay, resonance that comes between the you know continuous gold film and the silica spacer where the magnetic field is not only strongly confined in the gap region between the nano disks but also strongly enhanced between the nano disks and the other case which is the long wavelength mode so at uh, you can call this as lambda 2, this one is lambda 1. So, you can say the long wavelength mode which is at lambda 2, 1468 nanometer, this is basically a localized surface plus bond resonance peak, where the magnetic field is mainly con concentrated within the gap between the topmost nano antennas and the gold underlay. Okay? And since uh, titanium is dispersive, it is very dispersive and has a relatively large imaginary part. Okay? If you look into the dispersion relation, you will get to know that. The intrinsic absorption coefficient of titanium is very large. Okay? So, you can actually understand that the quality factor of the resonance of this localized surface plus bond resonance peak here is rather low and that give, gives you this broadening of the absorption and that is how you know and this is the difference between uh, that gold disks and titanium disks and why we actually opted for titanium disks here when we are planning to make a broadband absorber. Okay? So, 
once again we can attribute this broadband absorption to the combination effect of propagating surface plus bond and a uh, low Q localized surface plus bond resonance. Now, you can see here some of the you know uh, parameter uh, parametric sweep result it means like uh, the influence of some parameters on the absorption performance and how the absorption spectra looks like for different materials. So, this one is a simulated result where D is the disk diameter that has been changed from 380 to 400 to 420 nanometer. The same thing is also seen experimentally and you can see how it changes. So, they are sensitive to the dimensions as I mentioned. So, you can actually design uh, the disks based on your requirement. Again, uh, the periodicity is changed here and the periodicity uh, also tells you, it actually gives you the range over which you want to have this broadband absorption. So, here periodicity of 580, 600 and 620 nanometer has been studied and simulated results and experimental results, they are very, very close to each other, right. And here also you can see if you take the contribution to this absorption coming from gold and uh, titanium, you can clearly see that titanium is contributing to the most of the absorption. So, that is the case here. This absorber is mainly based on this titanium nano disks. Now, we understood that how we can make narrow band, we understood how we can make broadband absorbers. Now, we have to understood, we have to understand how we can make ultra broadband metamaterial based perfect absorbers. So, when I say ultra broadband, I am thinking of a window something as large as 300 to say 40, 4500 uh, nanometer. So, it starts from typically you know UV, visible, near infrared and then you know short and mid IR something like that. You know? So, it is typically catering to a very, very broad band and uh, this is the kind of um, structures we call them as uh, ultra broadband absorbers. So, how do you make it? You can actually design them using 2D infinite array of hemi ellipsoid shaped metal or dielectric multi layer structures. So, here is the top view of the structure. So, these and this is the side view. So, you can see it is like a hemi ellipsoid. So, half of the ellipsoid and it is an alternating you know metal dielectric metal dielectric structure. So, it is based on a silicon substrate, but then you have a ground metal. Okay, it, it is it can be gold it or silver it can it has to be 300 nanometer so it blocks light completely and it will reflect okay and then you have dielectric metal dielectric metal you have th these are the simulation setup basically with PML perfectly matched layers so this allows you to do a simulation of this particular structure for TM polarization okay here the H field is considered to be along y axis and um, the wave propagation is considered to be along z axis okay and port 1 is the excitation port and port 2 is the other port so if you calculate s11 you can get the reflection characteristics and if you calculate s21 you can find out the transmission characteristics from the s parameter matrix okay and here is the periodicity p that is basically the size d and the gap g between the um, hemi ellipsoids. So, how many layers? We have considered uh, 20 layers of metal dielectric alternate structures here molybdenum and uh, germanium um, are considered and not gold we are using uh, tungsten as a ground metal um, and this is standing over a silicon substrate. Okay. So, a perfectly matched layer as I mentioned has been applied here on the top and bottom of the unit cell. So, this is the side view of the unit cell, this is the top view of the unit cell that you can see here. D is the you know um, diameter of this hemi ellipsoid, the base diameter that is 400 nanometer and then uh, gap is 20 nanometer. Okay, the periodicity is 420 nanometer and these are the parameters that we have used and other parameters are mentioned in this particular figure. I will not read out each of them. And then we have uh, then uh, using the RF module of the 
uh, console multiphysics software, the absorption spectrum has been calculated for 300 to 500 nanometer spectral window. Okay? And this allows one to get absorption, reflectance and transmittance for this uh, structure at normal incidence. So, this is that particular structure absorption, reflectance and transmittance. And as you can see here, the transmittance, the red one is completely flat. So, there is zero transmittance across the structure and you can also see that the absorption uh, reflectance, sorry, absorption is almost 100 percent uh, of other than this few ringing effects that come from uh, multiple resonance here. Okay? And uh, more or less it is a very flat wide band uh, absorption. Okay? And what is not absorbed is uh, kind of reflected. So, the green, green curve shows you the reflection curve. And this is the plot for the two polarization T e and T m polarization for normal incidence and they are perfectly matching because the structure is also symmetric. Right? So, this particular structure as I mentioned it is a ultra broadband uh, metamaterial based perfect absorber or this kind of absorbers are also called super absorbers because they give you almost 99 percent average absorption and that is the big thing 99 percent average absorption between 300 to 400 uh, nanometer spectral range at normal incidence and this particular spectral range it comprises as I mentioned earlier UV, visible, near infrared, short wave and mid wave infrared wavelength. So, that is pretty wide range. Okay? So, this kind of uh, metamaterial absorbers can be designed. Now, let us look into the applications of this metamaterial perfect absorbers. The first application that comes to our mind is solar energy harvesting. And when we talk about solar energy harvesting, the most important thing for us is to know that how the solar spectrum looks like. Okay? So, you can see this is the solar spectrum or solar spectral radiation okay, versus uh, wavelength. So, it actually um, follows this particular pattern. Okay? So, you can actually have a black body radiation that uh, black body radiation peaking around 5500 I believe okay, that can match this uh, 5500 Kelvin okay, that can match this particular solar spectrum. But then what is important here is that it tells you the range over which you are supposed to absorb. Now, if you do not absorb anything beyond say 1800, you are not losing much. You are only having a very small portion of the solar spectrum which lies beyond uh, 1800. So, you can actually design your uh, absorber until here. Okay. There are many attempts basically in uh, the literature to design this kind of uh, perfect absorber. One such uh, design has been uh, published in this paper that I am showing here. So, this is a broadband absorber where you have a periodic uh, square array of silica which are coated with iron film okay. and this is um, separated from a bottom. Um, uh, iron mirror by another silica film and a GST film. So, this is the 3D view and uh, this is the 2D view of the structure. Again, you can uh, calculate what is the spectral absorptivity of this structure. You can see that this structure can absorb very strongly from 400 to uh, 2000 that is the entire band that we are looking for. Okay? Now, this is the absorption that is from this particular structure. Now, if we tweak the structure a little bit or you redesign the structure, your aim would be to have a flat absorption line over this entire window and the discussion we had previously, those kind of structures can give you uh, almost 100 percent of uh, absorption over this band. Now, the question is why then we need to design this one again if that, that previous structure is giving us all that we need. Now, if you see the previous structure fabrication wise that structure is very, very challenging. It is a hemispherical shape with alternating layers of metal dielectric, metal dielectric and then you know you have to maintain that uh, uh, reducing dimension as well. 
So, that is a very challenging structure on in comparison to that this is much easier structure and that can give you an average absorption of almost a 90 percent or so 90 to 95 percent. So, in some cases where you do not have the facility to fabricate those complicated structures you can still be happy with this kind of a structure. What are the other um, other applications? So, this one is basically an absorb uh, application of a broadband metamaterial perfect absorber. Now, you can also have applications of uh, narrowband uh, metamaterial perfect absorbers as thermal emitters. Now, what are these thermal emitters? Now, if you think of a black body, it is basically an idealized body that can absorb all radiation which falls on it and it re radiates energy solely determined by its temperature as described by the Planck's law. Now, when you develop matter materials okay, and you are targeting an application of perfect absorber which exhibits the ability to have near uniform or near unity absorption in a frequency range, you are basically making it like a black body. So, the same material can also behave like a thermal emitter, right? just like black body radiates, your matter material can also radiate. Now, according to Kirchhoff's law of thermal radiation, at equilibrium the emissivity of a material equals to its absorptivity. Therefore, in principle the matter material perfect absorbers can radiate energy as described by their absorptivity at a given temperature. Now, because of the resonant nature of the matter materials, the perfect absorber, the narrowband perfect absorbers, they yield you know very sharp resonances with high absorption that means they will basically act as very high q thermal emitters and they will also have very high emissivity so that way you can actually make very high q high emissivity thermal emitters so here is an, uh, one design of uh, infrared uh, metamaterial absorber that will also work as a thermal emitter we'll see that so, here is the structure first you start with a plus type okay, plus kind of a uh, structure. So, this is a metallic structure gold structure on a dielectric and on the back side also you have another gold layer. Okay. So, this is the top view of the single band uh, metamaterial absorber and uh, these are the dimensions okay, all are in microns here length width periodicity all are given. Okay. And this is a dual band. So, this is basically a mixture of uh, the small and the large. There are two structures which resonate at two different uh, frequency band and that is why it is called a dual band metamaterial absorber and the dimensions are given here all are in microns again. And these two shows the top view, these two figure uh, shows the perspective view. And in the two cases, the thickness of the dielectric spacer is 0.2 micron here for the single band metamaterial absorber and it is 0.3 micron in the case of dual band metamaterial absorber. Now, when you do the experimental um, absorption study of this structure, so here in the inset you can see the ACM images. So, for the single band structure you get this uh, peak which is pretty good and also these are all um, experimental pictures okay for the dual band you get these two bands which are uh, absorbing very strongly right so that way you can also compare the experimental absorptivity with the emissivity and you see that they do follow the law of kirchhoff that we have discussed that the absorption uh, pattern is same as their emission uh, spectrum right so, that way um, you can actually see that uh, you can develop a thermal emitter, a high Q thermal emitter at a single band, a dual band or multiple bands depending on the design of your metamaterial absorber. Okay. So, this one shows the absorptivity and emit emissivity of a single band absorber or you can say emitter. whereas this one shows a dual band absorber or emitter. Okay. So, that way you can actually design 
the materials. So, what is important here is to understand that the structures, the emission spectrum is completely dependent on the structure that you are designing. Okay? If you choose a different shape, if you choose a different material, if you choose a different uh, periodicity or a thickness, the resonance peak can be changed. If you want to play with the um, Q factor of the resonance, you can choose if you want a lower high Q, okay, means you want a sharper resonance peak, you should select uh, materials which are less lossy and then if you want a um, resonance with a broader Q, okay, you should actually choose materials with high loss that we have seen. Now, while choosing the material properties, you got to be very careful about the dispersion. So, you have to choose the material property that is suitable for the range, the frequency range that you are considering. So, usually um, there are websites like refractiveindex.info where you can download and see the dispersion curves of different materials and that helps you understand which material could be useful in designing what kind of uh, you know emitters at what frequency band okay so with that i think we have covered the topics and that's all for this lecture we will um, consider the topics of uh, smart su sorry super lens and hyper lens in the next lecture and in case you have got any queries on this particular lecture you can drop an email to this email address with in the subject line thank you mm -hmm.